Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Fred Dixon. I'm the product manager for Big Blue Button. And this is the Big Blue Button project update. We're just finishing up our developer summit. And this is a chance to sort of share with everybody uh, the work that we're doing on the current release, the next release, and about the project in general. So I'll get right through it. And uh, if you have any questions, just type away. The Here's an overview for the project, just for those who haven't even know about it. Big Blue Button is an open source web conferencing system for online learning. Our goal is to provide remote students a high quality online learning experience. The project originated at Carleton 2007. Uh, the client is currently flash based, and I'll talk a little bit about that. It's been in development for over seven years, uh, over 25 languages, lots of downloads, and it has had some huge design wins. The uh, Defense Information Systems Agency, it's an organization of the Department of Defense, recently publicly deployed uh, or stated that they've deployed internally a system built around Big Blue Button, and they expect to save at least $12 million annually doing it. That's a huge design win for our open source project. Probably one of the largest deployments of Big Blue Button worldwide. In terms of how we position ourselves on the market, we'd certainly say we're an open source web conferencing system. If you Google, we are the top search results. It's certainly one of our goals is to basically become the leading project for web conferencing. And if you haven't seen Big Blue Button before, the interface is pretty straightforward. You have the users list, you can see the videos, presentation area, chat, you can share your desktop as well. We have polling. You can do different layouts as well. The project is has a large community, and there are a small group of people who are responsible for committing to the project. They're the ones responsible for the QA, and this is their list of committers. It's not a closed list. If you look at our docs, other people can join, but this is the, the folks who are basically responsible for ensuring the quality of the project. And that's how we run the project, is basically really focus on the quality. We hold a number of developer summits. In 2014, here was the fifth summit in Porto Alegre. The sixth one was in Ottawa. The seventh one was in Porto Alegre. And yes, as you can imagine, the next one was in Ottawa. And you'll see a blog post on the Big Blue Button blog shortly about it. So in terms of the project and how we focus our effort, what is it we, we you know, stand behind and build the project upon? We focus on teaching and learning online teaching and learning. There's not, we're not trying to build, a, to be honest, like a pharmaceutical or corporate or other types of web conferencing that's really, really focused on teaching and learning. But if we solve all the issues around real-time collaboration, we essentially solve them for many other markets. And as you can see that from DISA adopting the use of the glue button in a huge way with inside the US military. We release on quality, not dates. We watch other open source projects and we've also, believe that our, each of our releases should be like a product release, very high quality, extremely tested, so that people have a lot of confidence around when they use it. And open source as well. We believe in the on social benefits of open source and also the entrepreneurial opportunities as well. And we like to under-promise and over-deliver, hence the convert conservative version numbers. And how we measure success? Well, teachers and students want to use Big Blue Button. They choose Big Blue Button over other alternatives. Certainly by design wins, we've had some good ones so far, and the growth of the Big Blue Button ecosystem. How many companies are involved, how many developers, how many users, and so on. With the online learning space, there are a number of uh, LMSs that we have deep integrations with. People who are using Big Blue Button in the context of some environment, and the learning management systems where the Moodle, Sakai, Canvas, Genzibar, Schoology, we also integrate with WordPress, and we support learning tools and interoperability as well. Here's an example of what it looks like inside of Moodle. It's just a link inside the course. Students would click on it, and they would go into the class, single sign-on. In terms of the community, uh, we have quite an active developer mailing list, over 2,100 members now, lots of activity in the past couple of months, lots of activity in the code base as well. This is the GitHub commits going back to 2008, and you can see it's very active. There's lots of people involved in it. We tend to both have what one major release a year and updates throughout the year. In terms of priorities, so with my product management hat on, I care a lot about stability. It is the number one thing we work on. And then usability features, and then the accessibility, security, and scalability. You can kind of mix the order of the last three depending on your per, uh, perhaps interest. But for us, stability, usability, and features are always the order in which we work on. 
In terms of the release cycles, I actually took a look at the data. The last previous three releases were all about 17 months apart. The 1.0 release, which we expect to go, it's already in release candidate to go final, it is trending around 12 months development. And in terms of how the releases have looked in terms of actual defects and enhancements, you can see there's a trend that as we continue on with the releases, there's fewer defects and there's actually fewer features. There's more big ticket items we work on like polling. And this reflects that so much effort we put into each release, the next release, we're just fixing more and more of the edge cases. That was certainly the case with this release. In terms of our development process, we go through phases of development, design, detail, design, development, then beta, a release candidate, and the final release. And it's usually tracking around this, some number of months for development, uh, definitely a good chunk of time for beta testing, and then we do a release candidate for two weeks. But this cycle is actually reducing as we get more people working on the project and as we start to do things in parallel, which is what we've, what's been happening in the last couple of years. And it's just about the release candidate our criteria. This is all available on the website. Just wanted to share with you, just there is a strong process that goes into each release of Big Blue Button. And an overview of 1.0, the which is I think our 14th release. Again, we're conservative in the numbering, but it's uh, it goes back to our under promise over deliver philosophy. The smart polling, this is the polling we wanted to get in. Um, and some other UI improvements, boilerless webcams, emoji icon, some stability improvements where if the user's on a net firewall network and the firewall decides to cut the WebSocket connection for WebRTC every five minutes, which sometimes firewalls will do with long running socket connections, the client will just reconnect. The user will hardly even see it. We build our audio on top of WebRTC and it's worth pointing out the amazing capabilities WebRTC in the browsers, Firefox and Chrome. It, it, it's phenomenal, the quality. It's UDP-based audio, 48 kilohertz, ultra wide band, uses the Opus codec, it's encrypted as well. And if you are not using Firefox or Chrome, Big Blue Button would just fall back automatically to uh, using flash-based audio. So if you're using Safari or IE, and Safari, that's TCP-based, 16 kilohertz is still really good, but the audio quality for WebRTC is amazing. And we're building on top of that in the browsers. Some of the features we've got in 1.0 in the polling. So you have a new, the presenter will see a new icon, a new button to choose from a list of predefined polls or just to do some custom one as well. So if you choose like A, B, and C, uh, the presenter will see the results coming up on the screen live in real time as users click. And users will see the choices underneath the slides. And this is reflecting that most of the times when polling occurs, it's in the context of a presentation. And the instructor may have a couple slides that say, let's do a quick review. And they can poll the audience, again, increasing the engagement. So here, this question could be, you know, whatever. And then there's three choices underneath. And the users will see those. As the instructor gets the results back, they can close it, in which case no one else would see the results, or they can publish it, and the publish will appear in the recording as uh, in the lower hand corner. So everyone sees the results in the presentation. We actually went a step further because we already have the text for the slides in memory. And what we can do is we can look at the slides and say, do these follow a pattern that looks like there's a question on this page? And what we're looking for is like a carriage return, a single character, a period, and a separator, which is the which is the default format for uh, like PowerPoint or, uh, or, or a keynote for outlining. And we make a guess that, hey, this looks like there's four choices in this slide. And we'll actually give the user a button that's just one click. So now you can imagine an instructor wanting to set up a bunch of questions to review the material for students. They could go to the page, press one button, initiate the poll, and press the button to publish it. Very quick, very easy for the instructor to engage. We also have a lock settings as well. Some cases you want to lock down users, maybe prevent them from doing private chat and so on. That's there in the product. And if you just wanted to use Big Blue Button, say for video chat, you can do it as well. There's no limitation on the number of webcams. It's purely bandwidth related, really. Here's an example where there's eight people sharing webcams and I just click on one to make it larger. And in terms of mobile client, which I'll talk about in a few moments, we actually do we actually have built in some support for the Puffin browser. Puffin is a browser that runs on Android and iOS that lets you run very complex, very uh, CPU intensive web applications. And it actually renders on the server and streams it back to the device. Actually works pretty cool. 
This is a screenshot I took on our demo server, uh, and I was using my iPad to do it. So if you if you have students or you want to really try out Big Blue Button today on mobile, try out the Puffin browser. We take accessibility very seriously. Every release of Big Blue Button, I think for the past three years, we have an external company review it and audit it and make sure that we're adhering to accessibility guidelines. We'd have really good support for JAWS, a screen reader, and we have up on our website a statement on accessibility. That was Big Blue Button 1.0, which is currently in release candidate. By the time you're probably watching this, it's released. It'll only be released in a few more days anyway, we expect. I want to talk about now about 1.1, which is in development. So in terms of things happening in parallel, just in the general, uh, if I look at our master, uh, we were doing Big Blue Button 1.0. We branched it off. Uh, the Big Blue Button 1.1 has actually been in development for a while. Three things we're working on, closed captioning, breakout rooms, and faster desktop sharing. That's in a branch, it's gonna merge into master, and then that will come off to a branch of 1.1 when it's finished. In parallel, we've been working quite a while on HTML5 client and mobile client as well, which I'll talk about in a short time. So let's talk about the new features that are coming in 1.1, breakout rooms. So polling was the one of the key features we wanted to get in. Breakout rooms is another. It's it's kind of like if a university or college or educational institution, if they don't use breakout rooms, they're not missing it. But if they have breakout rooms in another product, they really do want to see it in Big Blue Button. So this is what we've been working on. The moderator will have in their moderator controls an option for breakout rooms. When they do it, a dialog box will come up giving the ability to choose how many breakouts they, rooms they want from two to five. Um, they can randomly assign it the number of minutes. And here you'll see there's five breakout rooms. And this one here not assigned is what um, if you don't want people to put in the breakout rooms. This is a UI mockup, but it's actually getting pretty close to that in the implementation. So when you click start, all the users will see a dialog box come up saying, you've been invited to breakout room two. Click here to join. They will drop from the audio in the current session, and they'll open up in the new browser tab, the breakout room. It's just like you're clicking on a link in the chat. It'll open up a new browser tab, but you'll be in the breakout room you've been assigned to. You can join the audio there. And that way, the user can go back to the main tab, tap, chat with the instructor, hey, we need some help, whatever, tap back to the breakout rooms, and there's a time limit. And the time limit appears right above the chat dialog. So the users can see they've got 15 minutes or 10 minutes in the breakout rooms. For the moderators, we give them visibility in what's going on in the breakout rooms. They can see the time remaining. They can see the rooms they've set up, how many users are in them. They'll also have two controls. One is listen, where if they click on it, they will actually join the audio bridge in the breakout room. And the user, they'll appear on the user's list so everybody can see them. The students can see that they're there. This is analogous to walking around a classroom where students have gathered together in desks and just kind of listening to what they're talking about. And that way you have the opportunity to join as well into the discussion. And if you want to join the actual breakout room itself, you can click the join. So the moderator can go in at any time, listen in the students and join as well. So we're trying to make it really interactive for both the instructor and the students. And you can close the breakout room as well at any time or let the time run out. And in either way, the users will come back to the main room and they'll rejoin the audio. The breakout room will just close and say you're finished. They go back to the previous tab. They're still in the main room and they can just rejoin the audio. The reason we have them join the audio is that we make sure that they're not in two audio bridges at the same time. So that makes it a little cleaner for the user. And they know they're going into a breakout room anyway. So the join audio is exactly what they do when they join Big Blue Button in the first case. The, we have really good support for screen readers. The other leg of accessibility we're working on is closed captioning. So the use case for closed captioning is that the school has students who are hearing impaired, and they want to provide live captions to the students and have those captions appear in the recording. So what we'll do is we'll have a, a layout in the layout menu here called closed captioning. And when a moderator brings it up, they'll see a dialog box like this. They can choose a language stream, point size. This is what students will see. And they'll have a field that they can type into. So typically, it's a stenographer with a stenograph machine, and they're able to type along as instructors talking. And if they do that, the text will appear here and they'll also appear live to the students. When the students go to the layout menu and choose break, and choose closed captioning, this is what they'll see. Very similar, they can choose a, a language track. So there could be multiple 
closed captioning tracks at the same time, Spanish, French, and so on. They'll pick one that they want to watch, and then they'll see the results come through live. After the session's over, all those closed captioning will be uh, stored as events, along with everything else in the session, like the chat messages, the raise hand, and so on. And in the playback, we'll add a closed captioning button to the playback bar so students watching it can see the closed captioning. So these are things that we're working on for 1.1, and this has been worked on and actually in parallel. You should see it come to beta not too far in the future. Again, lots more parallel development going on. In terms of desktop sharing, currently we're using a Java applet. However, recently Chrome stopped allowing browsers to launch Java applets. So we want to actually improve the desktop sharing and kind of not have this restriction for Chrome. So what we're doing is we're switching it to Java Web Start. And doing that will allow us to run, allow the presenter to run desktop sharing regardless of they're using Firefox or Chrome or other browsers. It'll actually be faster desktop sharing because it's going to run outside the browser. And we can capture the cursor as well. So that's coming soon too. Let's talk about the mobile client, which we've been working on for quite a while. But today, this is our big blue button interface. A lot of work on stability, make it show it fades in the background for users. It's pretty solid. But we do want to provide mobile options. So we're working on HTML5 client. And we're also working on an Android and iOS client as well. And you may be wondering, well, why don't you just do an HTML5 client? Isn't that what everybody just does? So it turns out that if we want to do two-way audio, well, on an HTML5 client, we need WebRTC. Today, on the desktop, Chrome and Firefox have really good support for WebRTC. And Internet Explorer, uh, Microsoft, is adding support in the next for an, an edge. And they're supporting and rallying around the WebRTC 1.1 standard. So you'll be able to see all three of those browsers. But Safari, Apple has not yet indicated any support for WebRTC on the desktop. Um, I, and so even if we created, even if we had an HTML5 client today, you would be unable to share audio or video uh, on your iOS device. And that will be the case with a web pure HTML5 client until Apple enables me and you to uh, run uh, WebRTC. And you may be thinking, well, there's Chrome on iOS and Firefox, but those are actually just UI layers across, around the Safari rendering engine. Apple prevents Apple prevents engines. They're restricted. You are restricted, and so are we, to just the Safari rendering engine. So uh, I'll talk a few moments about what we're doing in the client, but also a big part of it is the UI. We've actually been putting a lot of work into the user experience for mobile. And Tyler had made a presentation. Uh, and there's going to be a link to it in the blog post. But here's some look at what the mobile client's going to look like. And this reflects our desire to provide a modern UI that we what users would expect. We could take the big blue button UI and just put it on the mobile, but that wouldn't look very good. So these are UI mockups. Uh, here's like a landscape view. There's the user doing the emojis. Portrait view, you can see it on a handheld. The screen's kind of lots of space above and below. Probably landscape would be easier. And this is more like a tablet view. And you can see there's space now for the users list. And tablet here, and users list. Here's the chat, the public chat. And here's like a full screen mode. And this is what the presenter would see. They would be able to just upload, drag and drop, upload slides. There'd be some presenter controls here as well. And this is like the presenter presenting. So the clean controls to go back and forth and some annotation controls as well. Lots of work into it. Again, you'll see the information shared in another blog post on the UI. But we're going to, we're really leveling up the UI in Big Blue Button. So it starts with the mobile, and this is expected to go all the way to the desktop. The, the next release, 1.1, will have the same UI as you see now, just because we want to get that release out sooner. We think the closed captioning and breakout rooms are going to actually be a big benefit to our community. And, but I want to show you what we've been working on for the UI in the mobile and an upcoming a subsequent release of the Big Blue Button for the web. And here's another. Here's like a larger screen web. So you see the users list, the chat, presentation area. Everything is kind of very structured and very logical. Again, try to make the usability as good, as, as, as easy to use as possible. OK, so I'm going to talk to you about the choices we have in terms of the mobile client. What we are working today, Flash provides options for creating Android and iOS devices. So we're actually implementing that UI in a Flash client, actually an Air client. 
And uh, that's going to allow us to level up the UI and the web. And it gives us a common core between both the mobile clients and the web clients. So they're all going to be flash underneath. The users aren't going to care. They're just going to see the traditional big blue button and have mobile options as well. With Flash, it'll be using uh, Flash audio and video for go back and forth. We are working on an HTML5 client as well. And that works really well on Android. Uh, but as I said earlier, on iOS, Apple prevents you and us from installing any other different browser with its own rendering engine. There's no iOS in the pure HTML5 client. So what we're looking at, this is a bit longer term, there are frameworks that let you take HTML5 code and compile it into native uh, applications like React Native and so on. And these provide you iOS layers or uh, WebRTC layers for iOS. So the idea is we're looking to get towards where we've got a pure HTML5 code base. We're compiling to uh, native applications so that you have full access to WebRTC and we'll do it in the web as well. So the good thing here is that Big Blue Button has is your goal is to provide a really solid, stable environment. We have that today. We're always improving it. We've seen a lot of production deployments. In parallel, you can see the work that we're doing on the mobile clients and HTML5 interface. And you'll see a lot of progress on that this year. You can go to our demo server right now with an Android client and check out the latest, uh, the latest mobile client. It's running on demo.bigbluebutton.org. I'll put a link in the chat here. And if you want to see the latest stuff in the project, obviously go to bluebutton.org and all our developer documentation is um, at docs.bigbluebutton.org. Cool. And that's it. Um, I'm not expecting any feedback on this. I think I probably covered a lot of the stuff. Join the community, go to the Big Blue Button website. You can check out ways to interact with the community. We'll look forward to sharing with you more updates as we work through the project. Hope you're enjoying Big Blue Button 1.0. If you use it, blog, tweet about it, that's great feedback for the project. And this is a look at some of the work that we're doing this year on both the newer version, 1.1, and the mobile clients as well. Take care, everybody. Thanks again for watching.